My name is Gary Carter, and I'm the product manager for Postgres Plus products at Enterprise DB. This video is designed to familiarize you with PG Admin, a comprehensive database design and management console for Postgres Plus databases. PG Admin is a cross platform graphical console that runs on many Windows and Linux based systems. A shortcut to start PG Admin is created during the installation of Postgres Plus. On my Mac, the shortcut is under the Applications menu. On Windows, you will find it under the System Start menu. The database server is started when you finish installing Postgres Plus. The first thing we'll do is connect to the Postgres server. I'll select the local context menu, press connect, enter my password, and then press OK. We log into the server and we can see we have a number of objects for this particular server instance. Now PG Admin, for all its simplicity and clean appearance, is actually quite a sophisticated tool. It allows you to browse, create, and edit many aspects of your Postgres Plus databases. I'll open the databases node briefly. <clears throat> we'll look at the Postgres uh, database that's attached and we'll dive into the uh, catalogs node take a look at PG Agent, which is a job scheduler that's installed for you as part of Postgres Plus standard server. Uh, PG Agent has a number of tables. We'll just take a quick look at the PG Agent job class table and select the view data menu. And we have a little table where we can look at the data and actually select data or even begin uh, editing the data if we wish. PG Admin also contains a built-in configuration editor and this allows you to actually modify over 170 different configuration items for the database that's installed. All you need to do is click on a particular item of interest and you'll get a dialog where you can change the settings for that particular parameter. You can also perform other maintenance tasks like backing up the database, scheduling jobs using the PG Agent job scheduler which is installed automatically for you as part of Postgres Plus and even set up replication clusters using Sloan AI, the open source replication program. So those are a few of the things that PG Admin can do. But how does it do it? Well, it basically uses the three panes you see before you now. The leftmost pane is the object browser and contains a list of all of the objects contained in your database. These objects are managed using either the local menus or the menus across the top of your screen. Each object has associated properties. These are shown in the upper right hand panel. Finally in the lower right is the SQL pane. This contains a reverse engineered SQL script for the currently selected object, in this case the PGA job class table. You can copy this to any editor using cut and paste, or save it to a file using the save definition command. In addition to being a learning aid, it also allows you to use the SQL in other databases or scripts that you may wish to create. To create a database, I'll go over to the object browser, go up to the database object itself, and select the menu item for new database. I'll enter mydb as the database name and press OK. And now we see my database is listed under the databases node. If I click it and then expand it, we can see that it has a few default objects already in place. Now let's add some tables to record weather data in various cities across the country. To do this, I'll add tables under the public schema in our database. I'll select the table node and bring up the new table dialog. We'll call this table cities and I'll give it two columns. The first column will be the name of the city. Its type will be character and we'll give it a length of 80 characters. Second column will be called location and this represents an imaginary point on our map for the cities. Finally I'll add a simple constraint to the table. This will be a primary key which will prevent our uh, duplicate uh, city names from being entered into the table. 
we'll call this PK city name. And it will be associated with the column name in the table. Now that I specified my table name, the column names, their types, and a simple constraint to prevent duplicate records, I'll create the table by pressing OK. To see the results of our work, we can go over to the Object Browser pane. I'll select the Cities table. We'll expand it. And there's our two columns and constraint that we created. Now let's see a shortcut to creating a database table called Weather. In this case, I'm going to use the SQL Query tool that I mentioned earlier. First, I'm going to copy some SQL from another database that I've conveniently put in a text file. We'll copy that to my computer's clipboard, come back, open the query tool. I'll clear out any existing SQL that may have been present, and we'll paste in our query. We'll execute the query, and in our output pane, we can see that the query returned successfully. So now I'll close the query tool. I won't save my changes. I'll click the Tables node, we'll refresh the tables, and at the bottom of our list, if I collapse Cities, we can see our new weather table with its five columns and its one constraint. Now let's enter some data. To enter data using a tabular format, I'll select the Cities table, go down to the View Data menu, and select View Top 100. I'll type San Francisco, and for location point, I'll put in negative uh, 193, comma 54, close paren. And then I'm ready to enter data for a second. However, this is not the most efficient form of data entry, but it's certainly workable for simple test data. We can also make use of the query tool again, but this time to enter data in a more bulk-oriented format. Again, I'm going to copy some SQL from an existing file I have to save us a little time. Copy that to the computer's clipboard. Come back to PG Admin. I'll open the query tool. We'll erase the previous query that we had. Paste in our new query, which is an insert for three new records, into the weathers table. We'll execute that. We can see that the query returned successfully. I'll close PG Admin. We'll now go to the weather table and we'll view its data. And we should see three new records. And there they are. Now that we have data in multiple tables, we can use the query tool to view all of our weather data. However, rather than use SQL commands, I'm going to erase these so we have a clean palette, I'll use the graphical query builder. First, I'll get to the public schemas and I want information from the cities table. I'd like the name and location from there. And from the other table, weather, drag that onto the canvas. I'd like to get the uh, low temperature, the high temperature, and the date. And then I'll do an, a join between the tables so I get both of the data by linking the name from the cities table to the city in the weather's table then execute the query and as we can see down in our output pane I now have data from San Francisco for both dates. Notice we did not get weather data for Hayward because we never entered that city into the cities table. That concludes this simple demonstration of creating a Postgres Plus database in PG Admin. If you found this video helpful, you may want to consider using additional assets for your evaluation that can be found at www.enterprisedb.com slash solutions slash stages slash overview dot do. Or you can sign up for one of Enterprise DB's half-day or one-day training classes on topics like backup and restore, a jump start for JBoss application development, or PostgreSQL performance tuning. Thanks for your time today.